Oh, Nate, uh, Dante Toffo. We're not giving speaker. Oh, I thought you Oh, okay. I thought you said You're confusing me. I apologize. I'm a pirate, so this is elementary school, but. Did you all do your time signals or your time in your cells? I'm timing my cells. Time your cells. Like, time your cells. Perfect. Yeah. While my finger in my hair. Yep. Okay. If everyone's ready, I'll begin. We've got a lot to talk about. It's space. I'm just going to go right into it. The resolution today is the United States federal government will implement, uh, no, no, the United States federal government should substantially increase the militarization of space. In order to adequately define this round, my partner and I have proposed the following plan today. So the United States federal government will implement SBSP, that's Space Based Solar Power Satellites, in space as soon as possible through DOD funds. Now, a little bit of background. SPSP, Space Based Solar Power, is effectively a satellite which collects tremendous amounts of solar energy, since they can operate all the time, right? Collects um, a tremendous amounts of solar energy and is able to A, beam them to, beam them to the International Space Station, beam them, beam them towards a ship, uh, beam them towards um, like troops on the ground. They're receptive, like it, it shot through the air, basically um, just in the form of raw energy, and is then collected in like a copper um, satellite dish, which is then able to power like. Um, outpost in Afghanistan or something like that. This is something that the uh, federal government and the DOD have uh, been considering significantly uh, since the technology came online. In addition, the reason it's a weapon is because it can also focus the, solar, the sun's energy into a death ray. So, uh, moving on to our first contention entitled Star Wars, Space Wars, Space Hedge, whatever you want to call it, it's awesome. Our first uh, sub-point is harms. There, we've got a lot of harms. So, first of all, right now, the status quo of the United States hegemony is very low. This is a result of the fact that our use of, uh, this, this is a result of the fact um, of, uh, like, our losing, effectively, uh, barely win the war in, in Iraq. That really didn't increase anything. It just, like, it, we just broke even on that. We're, like, spending a lot of political capital and, uh, effectively losing the war in Afghanistan. Right now, the United States is also not seen as being able to take a substantial issue on any of the global crises that are facing us, uh, like the recession, like global warming, like, um, uh, like, like the threat of nuclear proliferation. That's a big one. For example, we're not seen as being able to at, in any way control the security of the globe as a superpower should be, which means we're really no longer considered that much of a superpower. Our second harm is that we lack a significant space program. This is especially evident in the status quo as President Obama significantly slashed the funds of NASA. Uh, of NASA. Our third harm is that China and Russia, and uh, China, Russia, Iran, and even North Korea are developing their space programs faster than the United States is currently expanding its own. Though they are starting from a bit of a, uh, they're, they're, they're starting a little bit behind since the United States definitely got a heads up on it with the whole Cold War business. It doesn't matter because the United States currently isn't even trying to expand our presence in space to any appreciable extent. Now, harms five is the United States is failing at uh, asserting space dominance in the status quo because we simply aren't trying, not because we lack the capabilities. What this means is it's providing a window of opportunity for other world powers, specifically China and Russia, to reestablish themselves as like hegemons, specifically by gaining the only high ground that still exists. Space. So, uh, moving on to um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, mo mo moving on to uh, our sub point B, which is solvency. The plan provides an increased U.S. presence in space inherently because we're putting things in space. That's fairly straightforward. But more importantly, it also provides a substantial U.S. military presence in space. That's our second solvency. Is space-based solar power provides um, uh, provides solar power for a space uh, a, a source of space-based power for any other militarized implements the United States wants to put up into space, be they TIE fighters or a Death Star or whatever. We're able to power it through these, uh, through these implements. Uh, more importantly, uh, 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 Solvency 3 is that it also puts a power source for ground troops. What's happening right now is there's a lot of ground troops which aren't able to adequately effectuate their goals because they're running out of like petroleum and things like that. This would make that unnecessary. Solvency 4 is that it puts a death ray in space. That's kind of a big deal. Um, Solvency 5 is that basically the plan would jumpstart the expansion of the United States hegemony into the only high ground that's left. Moving on to our internal link scenario. This is uh, basically, it's going to be a really long impact scenario. So the first internal link is given a few years, China and Russia will be able to adequately compete with the United States space program. This is very significant for two reasons. This is our second internal link. If the United States waits to respond to China and Russia until they're at an equal playing field, it will result into effectively an arms race in space in which the United States, Russia, and China are engaged in a three-way Cold War attempting to gain dominance in space. Not necessarily militarily at first, but this is our second, this is our third internal link. Because everything we do in space is inherently militaristic, look at the 
origins of the original space race. It was in order to be able to put, like, uh, like, like Sputnik freaked out the United States because it meant Russia could just drop things on them from the sky. That's a scary prospect for a nation, which means that it's automatically going to be a militaristic, uh, a, a militaristic environment, which would ultimately lead to an in, to a, a rebirth of the Cold War between the United States and Russia, or the United States and China, or China and Russia, or either one. It doesn't matter. It's still very, very bad. And the impact, and the uh, internal thing for is that the plan, uh, uh, not only the, the plan provides a jump start for the United States space program, which means that in the status quo, we will be able to uh, um, overtake and dominate the space race because in the status quo, Russia and China do not have the kind of technology we do, and they will not have access to SBSP once we put them up there. This leads us to our impact scenario. The first impact here is that would prevent a reinvigorated Cold War, and it would give, uh, it, it would prevent, um, Oh, oh, it would prevent a reinvigorated Cold War. Our second impact here is that U.S. superpower in space will prevent any kind of space force from the ultimate militarization of space that will occur during an arms race in there. Now, this is significant for two reasons. Number one, at the point in which there is orbiting weapons of death in space, this is a very, very bad thing for the planet because anytime there's any sort of proxy warfare going on in terms of uh, in terms of the, the normal Cold War dynamic, it will be capable for any nation to effectively obliterate the entire globe and turn it into a pile of radioactive ash. Now, this is bad because the extinction of the planet, it basically forecloses the possibility for any advancement of human society, it undermines our ability to get out of, to get off the rock and move on to uh, move on to bigger and better things beyond the stars. More importantly, it also causes the extinction of the entire humanity. This is an infinitely recursive impact because every single thing that humanity has ever worked for is ultimately irrelevant because we're all gone. The impact is infinity and it reverberates throughout eternity. That's the biggest impact on the ground because it eradicates any semblance of meaning. Uh, so, uh, now our, our second contention is going to be really quick. It's entitled Off the Rock. Right now, in the status quo, we're putting the Neil deGrasse Tyson. There is an asteroid which we will loop under our communication satellites um, uh, by uh, 2036. This is very significant because it might come back around again in 10 years and obliterate the globe. An asteroid would kill the entire planet. I've already described why extinction is bad um, because, uh, like everything on the planet, it's gone and becomes uninhabitable for even future alien life. More importantly, uh, the second harm's right. Uh, the second harm's right now is the United States no does not have the ability to colonize any uh, terraformable worlds. And the, and the third harm's which is the most important, is the fact that there is a terraformable world. It's, uh, we, we just discovered a Goldilocks planet which scientists are 90% sure has the capacity to support life and has liquid water on the planet. So this is very significant. Our, our solvency here is that the planet provides a source of space-based solar power to effectively perpetually beam energy to long-range space programs, which means we don't have to develop fusion to get to space, to get to, to, get to this Goldilocks planet. We can do it right here. Uh, more importantly, uh, we could even get to Mars much faster and we would decrease the necessary cost. The impact of this is very, very significant. The United States gets off the wrong and starts a space civilization. It means, uh, uh, it basically means it's the only way to prevent humanity from dying because of an asteroid. For these reasons, you have to vote for it. Uh, Let's go, man. Basically, what is happening is we are um, cluttering space to the point where we are potentially not able to put more satellites up. Um, when through the years we put so many satellites in space that it has basically become a junkyard for for a multitude of them. And what happens is they begin to collide, and then that collision results in a significant amount of debris that cloud that basically creates a debris cloud and spreads out. Now, when you have um, a basically a, a piece of satellite, it can be roughly a dime and it can destroy another satellite because it is going so fast throughout space that this debris is going so quickly that if it hits another satellite, then it wrecks that satellite and then more debris comes off that satellite. It exponentially increases, the debris field exponentially increases and so um, what it eventually turns into is, a, uh, is an area where you can no longer put anything up into space because 
putting anything up there would result in it immediately being shot down by this increasing debris field. Um, so, yes? Right. Um, if it's an exponential increase and satellites collide all the time, why haven't every single satellite that we have just basically been obliterated? Or why hasn't there been a significant impact to space junk now, since you said that we have so many satellites? It's, it's slowly getting worse. The, slowly the getting first, worse. The first give me a specific one, example. Um, in 2009, there was a low-lying Russian communication satellite with colli that collided with another one. Um, the fear is that because we're putting more up there, this will get extremely worse. And so, basically, uh, this um, disadvantage is not unique because... Uh, your plan is putting much more, many more satellites into space, and it's basically tur um, there's, if you want to look at it this way, a turning point. You are the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, so this is our link. Uh, you are putting more satellites up into space. Um, additionally, ones that have death ray capabilities that are very militaristic. Um, the internal link is that an arms race will occur within the various nations throughout the world, uh, mainly China, uh, Russia, Iran, the nations that they mentioned having space programs. Um, what I would like to point out is that China in 2008 shot down one of the United States' uh, satellites with a computer virus. Uh, wait, I actually can't remember if it was a computer virus or a missile, but they shot it down. Um, <laughs> okay, it was a missile. It was a missile. So they, uh, they shot it down, and what that resulted is that resulted in a, in a debris field. Um, so with an arms race, what will end up happening is that we are putting more and more satellites into space. And so uh, these countries will respond negatively. China will just simply shoot down the American satellites uh, in, re in immediate response because they don't want their hegemony. They don't want their security to be threatened by the fact that there's a death ray immediately above them. They don't want to think that Beijing is going to be obliterated in two minutes if we anger the United States. So they're going to do their best to shoot down as many satellites as possible. And that will result in uh, an exponentially increasing debris field. Um, that is also particularly why their plan is, is will create this debris field more because the way you shoot down satellites is with a missile, which involves lots and lots of debris. Um, <laughs> So uh, our second internal link is um, satellites are absolutely crucial for world trade. And so what, what will end up happening is if we have no ability to put communication satellites in, into space, we will lose our ability to trade with each other because it is absolutely key to communicate um, across borders, across oceans. And, and the best way that we do this, and the most effective way that we do this is with satellites. Our entire global economic system is, is based on these satellites in some way, shape, or form. So if they just completely, uh, if we completely take it out of the mix, it's, it'll be extremely difficult to move back to any sort of system uh, very quickly before we reach, before our impact scenarios come about. And so um, what uh, our third internal link will be is that um, global, the global uh, economy will shut down completely for an extended period of time. And um, what happens when the economy shuts down is you lose the mechanism to pay for resources. And when you lose the mechanism to pay for resources and, and trade with one another, then um, the strong in society, the most militaristic, begin to just simply take those resources. And what that results in is that results in uh, a significant increase in war and significant increase in genocide. Um, and finally, our, our, our impact is uh, with their plan, you are drastically increasing, uh, well, quite frankly, their plan will result in war and genocide. Um, and you can cross-apply many of their arguments for why uh, losing uh, various human beings is bad. Um, because human life is sacred, and quite frankly, we need to protect it at any way, shape, or form. Um, because when there's a significant amount of war, when there's a significant amount of genocide, lots and lots of people die, um, that's a, uh, that is a, um, well, just human life is safer, that's why it's important, yeah? Is war likely when one nation can obliterate another nation with a death threat? <laughs> well, we won't have that because that'll be shot down. Um, so finally, onto our, second, or onto our second disadvantage that it will destroy MAD, um, or uh, mutually assured destruction. Our A support is the uniqueness under the, um, under the, the nature of which nuclear weapons work. Uh, it requires time for them to, for us to actually get them ready and fire it. It requires a couple hours. Um, and this gives countries time to negotiate, like, hey man, don't fire nukes at us, like, reconsider <laughs> this. Um, actually, there's a quote by the Secretary of State under, Cl or the Secretary of Defense under Clinton that's as a an absolute miracle that humanity has survived uh, this long um, with the fact that we have nuclear weapons. Basically, what he uh, cited it as was we had enough time to talk other people down and convince them, like, hey, we're not firing nuclear weapons at you, that's a fl flock of geese. 
I'm not kidding, that actually happened. Like they thought a flock of geese was nuclear weapons and they began to fuel and, and prepare for nuclear war. Um, so our link is, uh, their plan destroys the time frame. Because if you have a death ray in space that can basically instantaneously kill uh, nations, um, kill entire cities, kill lots of people, then that's destroying mutually the, the ideals of mutually assured destruction. And finally, our impact is is that the time frame, um, well, actually, no, you destroy the time frame. That's our link. Uh, and the impact of destroying the time frame is that um, some sort of uh, nuclear holocaust, um, uh, widespread... Um, uh, fire the the. Uh, I'm trying to put this into words. Usage. Um, the usage of yeah, the usage of these uh, weapons will happen without the ability to have them talked down. So because the um, I'm using the evidence that the Secretary of Defense under Clinton said it was inevitable that something would happen unless we dismantle uh, or unless we um, assure that you know we have time to talk each other down. Um, when you eliminate the time frame, we are assuring that nuclear war occurs. We are ensuring that there is a worldwide holocaust. And you can cross apply all of their um, arguments for why species loss uh, is bad. Because quite frankly, if you have a nuclear holocaust, uh, it will result in the extinction of the human race. And so finally, on to their second advantages, or, or to their first and second advantages. Um, uh, their first one, um, turn it. Uh, because the arms race will, will quicken, the arms race won't stop, the arms race will quicken, China will simply just shoot down the satellites, we'll pour lots and lots of funding into making satellites of their own. We will, we will end up in a uh, arms race because no country wants to fall behind on possibly the greatest military opportunity in the history of mankind. Um, yeah, so they, they also have no solvency because China can shoot it down. And then on their second argument about get off the rock, um, we're not going to be able to put these up and get to that planet which is light years away within the time frame of the asteroid destroying us in 30 years. Because of the targeting error. 
Um, next on their links, uh, like they say an arms race will occur. As my partner stated, that the arms race is already occurring. We're already in competition with China, with Russia, and if the United States does not take a firm stance of dominance in the most uh, highest field of competition, which is space, then we will be go behind. If you can't, if you can't negotiate um, the lack of a arms race, which is already occurring, then you have to win with unlimited dominance. So we have to enact a satellite so that we can prevent an arms race. Their link scenario is in fact turned because if we don't have a satellite that provides the United States with the ultimate dominance militaristically, we're going to see an arms race. Um, additionally, they say China will shoot down our satellites. Uh, first, our satellite can shoot down rockets. That's part of the uh, impact scenario my partner provided is that it has a targeting system, so we don't have to worry about China shooting it down. Secondly, China's not gonna shoot it down because like one, they don't wanna piss us off, and two, their whole argument is they're talking about like, well, they're gonna freak out that we can destroy them in a blink of an eye. Uh, one, we already have that capability with nukes. They haven't attacked us yet. Two, um, the like solar array cannot take out an entire country at once, meaning that they're not going to freak out that they have to like lose their entire population in the blink of an eye. And uh, uh, and my next point that the satellite has a buffer system to collect energy and then shoot. It also so it's going to take time to shoot. The whole argument that they make later on their uh, other disadvantage like of the like uh, time scale is not effective. Um, more on like China just simply won't shoot us down. Um, and they say satellites are crucial to world trade. It's not necessarily connected to any of the link scenario they provided you before. Um, but uh, on to world trade, one, there are alternative satellites than space-based satellites. We also have ground satellites, so we can trade it that way. So one, they lose their impact. Two, um, world trade doesn't lead to the impact that they're talking about, like global economic shutdown. Like when we had the stock market crash, there wasn't sort of all of a sudden, micro resource wars all over the world. Like they have no empiric for this argument. They have no warrant for why we're going to be going in a resource war just because we can't trade for a couple minutes. Um, and additionally, like they say, when the global econ shuts down, like we're going to lose our mechanism to pay for these resources. One, no, like we're going to be able to pay for it out of just like DoD funds. Like all our money doesn't disappear from our coffers as soon as we reach our world's trade. And secondly, world trade won't disappear for the reasons. Um, so the third uh, and fourth uh, like internal link falls down. Um, and then like they're talking about sacred life. We are providing more safety for the human race than they are because of our advantages and because like one of their disadvantages fall. Um, disad two, no bad theory. Um, the uniqueness, it takes time to launch a uh, nuclear rocket. Uh, one, false, because we have submarines with link and eye technology. Like in the East China Sea, we have submarines with nukes on them. So their first uniqueness is straight false. And um, like they said that they have the time to discuss. Once again, that's false, as I stated. And for the argument I made on the first disadvantage of the buffer system, it <coughs> takes time to shoot our satellite. The laser has to store up energy from solar rays and then shoot it. So there is the same scenario of like a time to discuss the issue, the time to negotiate with other countries. Um, so their link scenario about like the death rate and the decrease of MAD simply falls. And additionally, MAD exists in the way that another country won't fire a nuke at another country, like say, China, like the United States will not fire a nuke at China, and China will fire a nuke at the United States because they know that they have second strike capability. If we were to shoot China with our laser, we'd have to fear that they'd attack us, and vice versa. MAD still exists because we can't wipe out the entirety of every single military site that they have in the entire world in the blink of an eye. Nothing has that capability, not even a nuke can take out the entire of the, the entirety of the United States in the blink of an eye. Like they would have to take out every single submarine, every single satellite, every single military installation we have in the United States in the world that has nukes to like take down that theory. Um, so all their links simply fall like their impacts that this will lead to a world holocaust, they don't give you links now, don't just give it to them, like they have no words. We win on this, and plus our impacts outweigh. Now, on to the first advantage entitled Hedmon. Um, uh, actually, I'm gonna, sorry, I apologize, I'm going to be going off the rock first. Um, first of all, uh, right now we have no off, the, under our arms, we have no off the rock scenario, like we've cut funding to NASA, we need this plan to get off the rock, for two reasons. Um, one, when you have a uh, satellite with uh, energy beaming technology, you can shoot a microwave 
at a uh, uh, concerned, uh, not a prospected shuttle. And what that does is it will release gas because we can have a plate that we hit with a microwave that heats it up, releasing gas because when it becomes a vapor and that propels it through space. And this uh, propulsion is exponential and that will give us the ability to get off the rock because now we have the ability to store, um, to shoot infinite amounts of energy to our spacecrafts and thus uh, navigate the solar system and beyond, which we currently do not. This is how we get off the rock, and additionally, the same way we can protect from uh, asteroids, because we can shoot an asteroid, propelling it away from the Earth. So we get human salvation on these two points. These are two separate link scenarios where we can take out the threat of a meteor and get humans off the rock, where we get our impacts of the ultimate human salvation. Um, all their uh, arguments were simply cross-applied from their disadvantages, that's all. And please extend advantage one and two.
due to submarines. Um, essentially, they say that the satellite doesn't create mag because it can't wipe out everywhere. But the fact is that if we put one satellite up there, there's no essentially preventative thing from putting in more satellites. Uh, the satellite could be a very good trigger point if it actually does make it up. Um, really, there's no advantage. Dis there's no specific advantage of putting the satellite up in terms of MAD. I think our disadvantage comes across because you put that up there and it does scare the Chinese. Currently, the Chinese live under the status quo, which is a lot of countries have the ability to launch nukes relatively rapidly and destroy each other. But when you start changing that status quo, when you put up a death ray satellite, it is going to scare the Chinese. They can't be constantly freaked out because we have submarines with nukes because that just wouldn't be helpful for them. But when we start actively uh, pursuing new weapons, then they can start freaking out because it's a change. And they're not going to like that, and therefore you can bring across our impact, that impact that sort of, I think it's been agreed upon in this tournament, which is worldwide holocaust, um, destruction of the human race, therefore everything that we all stand for goes kaput. Okay, now off, er, yeah, now off case onto their thing. The first one was, it increases U.S. Hegemony, we turn this because we believe it increases the arm race. They essentially said that by putting a satellite in outer space, it will, the US will immediately assume dominance that cannot be taken away. Yet we've already seen empirically that China has the ability to shoot down satellites. The satellite is located in a certain, certain location. The satellite has to charge up. Therefore, it seems like the satellite does not immediately have infinite ability to uh, essentially end any sort of arms race because the satellite can be shot down as um, because it doesn't have the ability just to immediately take down uh, Chinese missiles. The Chinese can put up a satellite and then direct the satellite into the uh, Death Star satellite. Therefore, if the arms race quickens, we turn the whole thing. Um, I think that pretty self-explanatory. The impact of a new Cold War still exists except for Pretty bad. Okay, moving on to their second advantage, which was essentially off the rock. They suggested a way that we can now propel a spaceship light years to um, this new planet that was just recently discovered, actually, and that this will save humanity. Okay, so I'm getting that we haven't sent spacecraft to the moon with a person for like two decades. We haven't ever sent anyone to Mars, and now we're going to send um, men and women light years away to this planet that we hardly know exists using a technology that hasn't been tested in 30 years by the time satellites. I find this personally hard to believe just from what I know of technology. They say that this is infinite, that this radiate or this microwave beam uh, will just bounce off this plate. Well, the plate is finite, so you can't, you can't run out of whatever is burning up on the plate sometime. Then what do you do? Burn up the spaceship? They're all then people die on the spaceship. <laughs> Sadly. So their off the rock scenario is um, very <laughs> unrealistic, unless they're also suggesting that we have a huge amount of technological improvement in a bunch of areas. They're also saying that this death ray is going to shoot down an asteroid. Asteroid. Um, the death ray, they also said, was not capable of completely obliterating countries. Uh, therefore, but we're assuming this um, satellite can obliterate asteroids. Asteroids are pretty big, usually. So if we can't take out like large portions of countries with the satellite, how come are we going to be able to take out large portions of asteroids and keep them from hitting us? Because uh, going to the sort of idea of you get a whole bunch of debris, you hit an asteroid, breaks up the debris, and you end up with the uh, our first disadvantage of essentially space jump, bring down the runway, and no debate. So for those reasons, I urge a strong vote in the negation of today's resolution. Oh, <laughs> I still have 11 seconds. Uh, and we'll also not be able to think when this asteroid strikes and we're sort of anchor on that stuff. Thank you. Yes. 
Absolutely. Okay, so on there, advantage one, uh, they do not link to our impacts because the arms race will occur uh, it, specifically if you if you put their satellite into space. In fact, it will exacerbate. It will get worse. Um, the arms race uh, will get worse specifically because you cannot um, out dominate. Quote, quote, that was one of the terms that they used. You cannot out dominate somebody in, in an arms race. We saw that in the Cold War. Um, when you have it, when you have a race of technology, when you have it so, so pertinent as in space, when there are so much advantages to being militarized in space, countries will uh, put amazing amounts of resources towards their national security on this front. So there's no way that we're going to just simply out or out scare, out fund um, all the countries of the globe in space. Uh, they will continue to fund their space programs. They will respond to our actions with funding of their own in order to make sure that they do not fall behind in some sort of arms race. That's kind of how arms race work. Arms races work. We have never had an arms race. I can't really remember one where we just simply out dominated the other uh, countries um, before they had the ability to develop a new technology. That generally doesn't happen, especially when it's so important um, in space. So they don't link to their impacts because they just simply exacerbate. Uh, the arms race, um, other countries will respond negatively, and so therefore um, their advantage one becomes a turn for us. Um, on their second argument with uh, get off the rock, there's no link because um, you're, they're predicting the fact that we can take people off the planet and then send them to this uh, planet that's light years away, despite the fact that we haven't gone further than the moon, which is roughly, what, 400,000 miles away? They don't link um, because it, it's simply not feasible for us to do that in the time frame necessary. Additionally, uh, asteroids are really hard to predict um, when they're going to come in and when they're going to strike. Like we, we, um, we fairly rarely will be able to pick, uh, will be able to um, understand correctly when an asteroid is going to come and destroy the planet. Um, asteroids hit the United States all the time without NASA actually like realizing. Oh, by the way, there's an asteroid hitting the hitting the uh, hitting the globe because it's begging your pardon, but it's a big ass sky. It's really hard to monitor all of that. And it's really hard to monitor a, 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 an asteroid, which is very small, comparative to space, um, actually coming towards us. So there's no guarantee that this uh, satellite, which takes a while for it to charge up, um, there's no guarantee that it will destroy the asteroid in time, uh, thus preventing the get off the rock scenario. Um, and then on to our disadvantage one with the junk field. Um, we still link to all of our uh, impacts in this debate, the, our impacts are the only ones that continue to stand. Um, so you can flow through uh, genocide and war with um, the economy argument because uh, China will still continue to shoot down these um, this satellite because the satellite will take time to recharge because it can't destroy the missile uh, very quickly, as they pointed out. Um, what will end up happening is China will just shoot down the missile. Other countries will develop uh, missile systems to uh, evade any sort of security systems that the satellite has. It shoots it down. And the problem is, is when it shoots it down, regardless of the fact if, if the debris is decentralized away from where most satellites occur, all it takes is one piece of debris to hit another satellite for it to exponentially increase. That's the, that's the really sucky thing about exponents, is that when you start out with a low number, and if you have one piece of debris um, hit a satellite, then it exponentially increases, um, and then that exp it continues to exponentially increase. Um, so uh, what it does is it completely widens the debris field. Even if it's not, um, even if they're not destroying it dead set into where our satellites are, all it takes is just one piece of that debris to hit another satellite, and we have all of our impacts of the economy just going to put because the economy relies on satellites from outer space to communicate with other countries.
Oh, no, actually, it's going to be voters. Um, asteroid, Space Hedge, or, yeah, and then Junk Field, and then Map. Okay. So, first of all, my opponent's voters, they argue that on advantage one that the arms race effectively turns our first contention. This is not true. Extend across, uh, they, they never answered any of the specific um, uh, harms and internal link scenarios that both I and my partner extended throughout this round. Uh, look to harms too. Right, and look to harm soil, look to internal link too. They conceded that right now is the window of opportunity for the United States to preempt an arms race with China and Russia. Basically saying that China and Russia do not have the necessary technology right now to adequately compete with the United States. But if the United States continues to do nothing, then they will. And that will lead to the arms race. And that will lead to all the impacts that they incur. This was dropped throughout the round by my opponents. It automatically means that we access 100% of our impacts. Because the point which the United States can put within the next 10 years a satellite which has destructive capability that Russia and China can only dream of that it's going to preempt an arms race before it starts. We're nipping it in the bud, ladies and gentlemen. What that means is there is no chance for a cold war between the United States, Russia, and China. There's no chance for the annihilation of the planet as a result of the dramatically increased, uh, as a result of the, the, the dramatically increased, um, uh, like weaponizing power to the point when we can like put nukes in space and stuff like that, right? So you need to you need to look at the fact that this is the only way that we'll be able to solve for this potential for extinction. We're claiming that it will be inevitable. This arms race will be inevitable unless the United States acts in the status quo. They dropped that throughout the entire round, and that is the AFS first voter. All right. Now, next point is asteroids. At the point, my uh, my opponent, first of all, dropped this entire contention in his first speech. Don't let them don't let them stand up and make unrefutable arguments in the two MC that they can extend into the rebuttal and then leave me with basically what is it three and a half minutes now to refute all of their refutations against case. It's their fault they dropped it. Extended across my partner. Extended across. There was no argumentation made at the outset. More importantly, the argumentation, the argumentation that they made in the 2NC is simply not true. Uh, my opponent stated that satellite, my opponent stated that, well, the satellite doesn't have the ability to annihilate nations, which means the satellite doesn't have the ability to annihilate asteroids. That's not the one that we were talking about. My partner explicitly stated that, really, the way that the United States, uh, the way that NASA would deal with satellites, uh, the, the way that NASA would deal with asteroids, is not by blowing them up. This isn't the Bruce Willis movie. It's where the United States would shoot it with a laser to burn a small part of it. Since it's space and a vacuum, what that would do is alter its trajectory around Earth, which means we would dodge a satellite, not blow it up, and cause, a, a, and cause all the impact that they discussed. So that means we automatically are defeating any potential for the satellite issue. Also, they said the satellites are hard to predict, not Earth kill satellites. They're really hella big. We can see them. We've been tracking them for 30 years. All right. Uh, so, now, moving on to my opponent's side. Uh, moving on to my, so this means that you need to extend across asteroids as the number one voter in the round for the affirmative, but the point at which they conceded and really made no substantive arguments as to why the, uh, as, as to uh, why the satellite wouldn't be able to avoid asteroids. That means we're at least preventing an inevitable scenario for human extinction. This is the biggest impact in the round. This was straight conceded. Now, so that means that we are effectively winning this entire debate on that argument alone, regardless of what they say, an asteroid, an earth kill asteroid, is inevitable without plan. So, what this means is, there is a, and then, and then, there's, that, then there is the, uh, the second impact to off the rock. Basically, the argument they're making here is that it's not possible for us to get light years across the, uh, to, light years across the globe. However, uh, light years across the galaxy, not the globe. Anyways, um, we can still get to Mars. Like, the reason we can't get to Mars right now is because, like, cost prohibits us using the conventional methods of propulsion. This is an unconventional method of propulsion. Cost would not prohibit it. Thus, we get to Mars, and, like, we have the ability, like, like we have the ability to at least set up uh, an attempt to start colonizing it. Right? So, just because, since we can prevent the asteroid that's going to kill us in 20 years, and then that means that we can buy us some time to actually develop colonialism um, on other planets, which means that we'll be able to expand and flourish as a human race, which is the only way that we're going to be able to survive. Okay, now, one of my opponent's last two uh, voters, which was Jump. They conceded the uniqueness takeout. This means they have no impact in the round. If we're launching a satellite in a month, then that means all the impacts of that means all the impacts of this disadvantage are going to be incurred no matter what happens in this debate round, right? So that means they have absolutely no impacts in this round. This was straight conceded in all of my opponent's speeches. Now, um, so that means they have no impact to their drug field argument. More importantly, on the China can shoot out satellites, this is the only offense they have on case. They state that since China can shoot down satellites as a terminal solvency deficit case, we're not going to be able to access any of these things. They state that since it takes time for us to charge up the satellite, that we can't shoot down a missile. These satellites are in goddamn space. It takes a long time for a missile to get there. The speed of light travels a hell of a lot faster. That means to the point at which we see a missile coming towards the satellite, then the 
satellite is able to just like charge up in like 20 minutes, whereas the missile takes like an hour to get there, and then we blow it to hell, right? So um, what this means is that we're able to secure satellites in uh, we're able to secure satellites in space. They also make the argument that we're not going to be able to effectively like deter uh, through math theory uh, because like the satellites stay um, focused on the sun. That's not true. The Earth rotates underneath the damn satellite. That's not what that's not what like solar synchronous orbit is. Like the like basically what happens is the satellite. Um, yeah, like the Earth will keep rotating, the satellite can shoot it as fast as the Earth moves. That's hella fast. So that means we win every argument in this round. Vote out. <laughs> yeah.